We're about to tear down the long-awaited C40 motor EX30 from Bagode. Yes. With the fancy new Bagode pedals. Oh, look at those things. Cool. We'll, put, we'll put them on a scale later. Yeah, we can scale them. I didn't remove the 3M. I think this side I did, but then the other side I was like, screw it. Yeah, this side I did. I'll just... Because I knew I was going to tear it down today anyways, so yeah. there's no point. Yeah. They, uh, we weighed these yesterday, so each battery pack with the casing and batteries in them, I think it was about 5.14 kilos or 11 and a half pounds for those who want an Imperial system. They are pretty heavy. Okay. So for the whole wheel, I think the wheel weighs about 100 pounds, 40 some kilos. I, I, I 20, 20 or so of that is just the batteries themselves. So we have the new Bagode pedal and the old Bagode pedal. As you can see, it's been really thinned out. Um, whether or not it impacts the strength of it, I would probably venture to say a little bit um, because at the end of the day, most of the times when these pedals do crack, they crack from the, where the rod is. As you can see, this is the thin part and that's the thick part. So the thin part basically stayed the same. They just removed it from the backside. Oh, yeah. So I think strength-wise, they should be pretty comparable. CNC to CNC, cast to cast. And then if you look at the weight, so the old one weighs, what's that? Point 90, 906 or something. grams? Sure. Yeah. And this one weighs 570. It's almost half almost the weight. Almost half the weight, wow. Yeah. Right. It's almost half, Doug. 570 versus 968. Wow, that's yeah. like Clark pad. Uh, Clark pedals territory. Clark pedal, yeah. So as he takes off the seat, uh, there's two things to note. First is with the Master, Master Pro T4, uh, the foam, seat foam used to always be screwed from the top two screws and the, and the back two screws here. Uh, they changed these to the sides, which is a lot better because then at least you can adjust your headlight freely if you need to and they're not stuck to the headlight or you don't bend screws. Uh, secondly, some people had the issue with these flaring out. So by putting the screws here, it kind of prevents that, but also, as you can see, the thickness of the foam is much improved, so it's not a flimsy side piece anymore. And then as we come up to look at the motherboard, uh, for those who are familiar with the Master Master Pro, uh, this display cover used to be one piece, and then they used to, with the charge ports, and they used to have a separate piece here to cover the charge cables, or the, the battery cables, battery cables. Um, which had a propensity for water to potentially drip into the motherboard or get very near. Uh, with this design, they kind of cover the whole thing as well as you can see, oh, can you grab a master motherboard cover? Yeah. So with them, as Doug grabs that, uh, with the EX30, this motherboard cover is maybe three quarters of an inch tall, uh, which gives you that a, a stronger roof kind of covering. Uh, as we take it off, you'll I'll also point out some other small changes that they made. Uh, but if you compare it to the master one, you can see that the roof aspect of it is much, much more narrow. So they definitely have improved a lot in terms of the details. So you see that thickness mm -hmm. versus that bottom yeah, thickness. Yeah. So it's, it's almost more, three times thicker. It's basically more splash yeah. resistant. It's more splash resistant, correct. There you go. I'll leave that back to you. Um, but yeah, and then they replaced those nylon with this uh, kind of like a duct tape-ish waterproofed uh, oh, yeah. cable tie. That's better. So it's a lot better. And then these, of course, are the metal battery Definitely boxes. Definitely looks more water resistant than yeah. uh, any other big old wheel I've seen. Yeah, even the tail light, like it looks from here, it's pretty well sealed compared to the Master Pro one. That was kind of, again, a little bit of an afterthought. Yeah. yeah. So it's not verified, but it does look very much so like the T4 linkage. Mm -hmm. um, it could just be that's painted black and has a bit of a steeper rake to it. Um, but there's, there's one change is that if you look at the uh, shock absorber, they actually angled this 45 degrees now, so it's a lot easier to add and remove air uh, and adjust air. Whereas previously, this would be facing the same angle as the uh, red knob, so it's always hard jamming that thing in. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah makes sense. So He's Doug removed the cover. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, all of these guys have insets, these little round oh, yeah. insets for now to sit into really oh, well. With the, the O-ring. Yeah. Thing. So oh. it's a very uh, well covered. And then even the front here, so previously, these never had the O-ring uh, cutouts. So they were just sitting on top of this metal line. Yeah. Now they cut all the semicircles out. So the waterproofing is much more improved in that, yeah, in that way. We're just draining the battery. Yeah. The motherboard looks similar to the new master motherboards with the capacitors all in a row at the top. So the newest iteration of masters have these capacitors as well. So the EX30 yesterday was ridden um, longer than the Commander Pro was. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. The X30 probably has about like about 100 km or 50 to 100 kilometers, and the Commander Pro is probably zero to 50 kilometers in mileage. Um, so when you look at the dirt and the dirt accumulation, you can kind of keep that in mind. Not as bad as the Commander, though. Yeah. So if you look at the top here, like this is perfectly clean, yeah. and we rode through wet, snow, mud, this this morning and last night. Yeah, I like how they now tie the battery brackets together yeah. with the metal. You mentioned yeah. earlier, this and is a lift bar. Yeah, it's yeah. a lift bar. But also you have the structural, more structural rigidity now because one is the metal battery cases, uh, but secondly, they have this as a bridge between the two sides so it's not just flopping around. Right. Yeah. So each of these are 5.13 kilos. Ooh. It gets kind of tiring if you grab it. Yeah, it's a climbing pinch strength right now. Yeah. Um, so on the top, you don't need spacers anymore. But at the bottom, you have this double thick spacer, which is, it almost looks double thick compared to the Master Pro one and the Master one. Yeah. The good thing I like about this, though, is if you look at this carefully, like here, on the mudguard, they added this piece here so that the battery has a flat and there's no sharp corner on the kickstand to puncture the battery. The Master yeah. was just, they didn't, Master didn't have this plate here. Yeah. So if the kickstand got kicked in, it would just kind of crunch the battery. They definitely th thought this one through a lot more. Yeah. A lot more thought process. Oh, did you unscrew that? I did not all the way. You down. don't have to. No, just leave it. Yeah. So I guess now we can uh, remove these. Remove the motor. Oh, everyone wants to see the motor. Look at the motor. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Cool beams. If you compare that to the Commander oh, wow. Pro, that's fully sealed. Wowie. Yeah. It'll be very interesting when we take it apart. I want to see how that spins. Well, there's a separation. What are you saying? Like I'm trying to see where the. Oh yeah. Where is the separation? So uh, these these frames hold the headlight and the taillight similar to how the EX20 works. Um, they also, in effect, lower the battery pack weight. So when you're riding around, it feels a lot more agile uh, and much easier to carve, less top heavy than the Master or Master Pro would ever feel. Also, if you look at this motor thickness, it's thick. Like it goes all the way across. It's a wide motor. Super oh, yeah. wide, compared to like the C30s or C30s. This motor was actually in the Monster Pro V1 and huh. the old Gawi EX. Okay. But it was a, it was a di slightly different because the, uh, the Magnus was all the way to the rim. So they redesigned it with a smaller hub. Are we ready to pull it off? Yeah, yeah. So it still has the spacers. Look at that. The frame, the motor. This is really what I'm most excited to see. Mm -hmm. I think we're all probably more most excited to see the innards. That is a seal. Whoa. Is this a seal? I know, I mean like, 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 like that gap. There's, well, there's no green. way water can get in. How no. does it even spin around? That's why I was Well there's a, a small like millimeter gap so where you have the grease. Insane. It's insane, yeah. It's packed wow. with grease. I think you need to this you can't really grab onto it. Go ahead hammer the other side. Hammer, which one? This side, so it pushes it out. Oh. There it goes. It's gapped? Yeah, it's gapped. It's gapped. Not as fun. Do you want to see the rubber seal? Yeah. The IP rated. So we got the aluminum. And then we have this rubber seal right here. Oh, yeah. That wraps over the axle. And then you have the regular bearings. Interesting. No, that's never been done before, so. No, not on the inside Let's like that. See how it performs in the vet. Super I mean, the main, the main thing is the, the magnet width is 40 mils. Yeah. That's C40. But it's only a two mil difference compared to the C38. But the main thing, the reason why people are so excited about this motor, one was the IP rating, which is the rubber seal that you saw. Uh, secondly, the C40 is known to have both torque and speed, um, which you'll know when you ride it. Okay. It's almost both of my fingers all the way in. <laughs> so <laughs> the girth of this rim, Damn. oh yeah. It's, no, but I mean the depth. Like, the depth, it's, yeah. it's very deep and you, you can easily wrap your fingers around this. It's like, easy, easy that's rim. way wide, okay. deeper. This is hard to wrap. So it's probably a real strong rim. So. Comparing V13 rim <laughs> and the EX40, or EX40, C40, EX30. Yeah, EX30. Okay. So we have the Abrams motor here as well. 
Um, just one thing to note is I had that issue with the V13 screws getting sheared off. If we look at the axles of all three of these wheels, you can see that the Bagode one is much wider than these two. Uh, but the screw sizes for this V13 and the Bagode are very similar. Um, these ones will go through a lot more leverage and torquing forces because they're so close together. So you see how with the Abrams, when they're close together, the veteran actually uses a much bigger bolt. So if we grab a, can you grab a These are M6, bolt? these are M10. Yes, yeah, so these are an M10 bolt, which are a much bigger diameter in order to hold the extra stress because they are so close together. So that was the EX30 teardown. And I will say, I can tell the GOAT is starting to improve some factors. They're, they're this, it seems it. way more water resistant, and that's important here in Vancouver especially. Um, it's a unique bearing seal. Uh, I would say I'm way more impressed with the EX30 build quality over the Commander Pro. Yeah. Um, looking at the motor difference, like you can tell two hall sensors, one hall sensor compared to the V13. Thermal paste on the hall sensor. Yeah, thermal paste. Not, nothing really. Yeah. But I'm impressed. So uh, let's hope the GOAT continues to uh, improve in, the, in their future models. And uh, thanks for tuning in to the EX30 teardown. Here we are. Yeah. In a room full of strangers. Standing in the night. <laughs>